Hello, my wonderful viewers. Welcome to my platform. This is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this channel and you like what you see after watching, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notification. In that way, you'll be able to get notified each time I upload a new video, even those without notification. Here we react to all forms of videos, international and local. Every Saturday by 2 p.m. we have our interaction section. You are free to call in to air your opinion about the happenings in our society. Invite your friends, share my videos with your families and colleagues. Do not keep this information to yourself. Myself, I will be sitting down here to watch this video together with you from the beginning to the end. Then we'll go to the comment section and leave our comment, our opinion about the video we we'll watch constructively as we watch this video, my people. You see, my brother and friend here today, Barrister Nyeson Wiki, Dike Ohawang Ikuri, great Nigerian, man who has interrogated the issue of concerning our democracy, particularly our federalism as a concept, through his actions as a governor. When you, when you interrogate authorities concerning VAT, concerning your powers as a governor, that the president is not a principal overloading himself over school purpose. Mr. Governor, sir, you have done well for Nigeria. May God bless you. When I listened to my rice activist on the pulpit, that's what I call him, my very good friend, Bishop Hassan Kuka. I wasn't surprised about his take on this issue because we seem to write the same way. Each time I read him, there was one day I read this article and I asked myself, is it because he's a bishop? Did he have the sense of Nostradamus or the oracle at Ilefe? And he was able to gaze into what I had just written, which I was pushing out. Prolific man, we are lucky to have a you in these perilous times. Continue to speak up. Heavens will not fall. Like one person ever once told me, if the heavens fall, it will fall on all of us. But it's never going to fall. Nigeria nationhood, cohesion, do we have one? I know we don't have one. Nigeria is still yearning for nationhood. After her independence since 1960, perhaps one of the greatest fault lines we have is the way itself by which we came together, cobbled together by Lord Lugard on the 1st of January 1914. Perhaps one of the most fought, strong, I mean, or the strongest fault lines is the way we were even named when we were formerly called Royal Niger Company Protectors. And one young lady felt that name was too long. And she wrote an article in the London Economic Times on the 8th of January, 1897. I said we should call that country that area around the Niger, Niger area. Which was why, how we came by the by the name Nigeria. We didn't really agree that we were going to be one country. The Berlin West African Conference of about 1844 to 1845 merely partitioned West Africa amongst the Portuguese, the Germans, the the English people, and all that. So it was not as if we agreed to come together as one nation which is why everyone is still suspicious of the other one. We already had the Hausa city-states, the Igbo city-states, the Karen Bonu Empire. Remember, we had great kingdoms, the Oyo Empire, the Bini Empire. Remember the great role of Oba, Oba, Ovarami Nogbaisi, the man who told the British, don't visit Benin during that holy month in December of 1897. 
as the British said, they must visit. And of course, the guards who were in charge of the moat seized them and killed them. That was what led to the infamous Benin punitive expedition of 1898, February, led by a British who led 1,200 troops. Didn't we know about people like great kings like Oba or like um, King Jaja of Opobo? They were already there. Moremi, Queen Idia. So, we had our set ways of life and we were happy before the British came with their mercantilism holding the Bible in one hand and of course slave trade on the other hand a trade that was to ravage us for over 500 years before people like William Wilberforce, Thomas Clarkson even our own Olaudo Equiano stepped in and before the great American Abraham Lincoln on the 19th of November 1863 abolished slave trade for which of course it was promptly uh, executed in 1865 so the problems have been there that is why no Nigerian believes I am a Nigerian if you ask me I, I will say I'm from Ijukwe a small village near Agenibode, in a circle, East local government area of Edo State. Because unlike what President Kennedy once told the Americans, think not of what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Nigerians ask themselves, what has Nigeria done for us that we are in turn expected to do much for her? That is why I go around Abuja or Lagos or any city in Nigeria on Sundays and you see the various town unions because the people believe more in their town unions in their village enclaves than that contraction called Nigeria which is practicing unitarism rather than federalism and my bishop brother narrated the history very well the American Revolution the independence of 17 um, uh, 76 and of course the Philadelphia Convention between May and September 1787 where they decided to have a more perfect union with 50 confederates coming together they were already confederates but they needed to have a more perfect union it was that convention at that convention that they agreed on certain irreducible minimals of government federalism, presidentialism, the doctrine of separation of powers, which had earlier in 1748 been popularized by the great French philosopher Baron de Montesquieu. It was at that conference or convention they agreed on the doctrine of judicial review. It was at that conference that Washington himself was thrown up, who became the first president of America. It was at that conference you had the great federalists like Alexander Hamilton, John James, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, great Americans that wrote the American Constitution, which today had just about 20, I think about 27 amendments and about 7,891 words, unlike our Constitution, which is as big as a briefcase and is unworkable because it is not the people's Constitution. Now, what happened at that conference is that the people decided to come together to believe in a document, in a constitution, which was people-driven. After the 50 states came together, 36 states, and then subjected it to a referendum. So I've always asked the question, why is Nigeria, why are we afraid of that word referendum when we hear of a referendum plebiscite? Didn't we do it here at least? in 1963 on the 10th of august when the midwest region was separated from the western region to become the fourth region in nigeria so referendum is not something we should be afraid of the process by which a constitution comes into being is even more important than the contents of that constitution 
which is why Nigeria derived the present constitution of 1999 that is actually decree number 24 of 1999. So the American constitution was people driven. Unlike the Nigerian constitution, there was a militarily imposed constitution. It can never enjoy the legitimacy, the credibility, the believability, and the autochthony of the people because it is not autochthonous. It, it, is, it is not people driven. So Egypt did it. They had their own constitution. Iraq, Iran, after a referendum, Kenya, South Africa, Morocco, Tunisia, Eritrea. Why can't we have our own constitution? It is not that it will solve all the problems, but it will be the beginning of the solution to the problems so that that mutual respect will come in. We cannot have national coercion in a state of inequity in a state of social injustice, in a state of religious intolerance, in a state or a situation where some people believe they are born to rule and others are born to serve as clappers and as hewers of wood and drawers of water. Let me end, sir. Since you are warning me, the way late MKO Abiola put it, I always like to mimic him. Great Nigerian who won the presidency but was murdered and he never reigned for one day. He said, you, you, you cannot be, begin to talk about uh, peace. There, there are different types of peace. In fact, the most peaceful place on earth is the graveyard, the, the cemetery. But, but that is not the kind of peace we want. The, the kind of peace we are talking about is peace that is imbued with, with social justice, uh, egalitarianism, uh, mutual respect, religious tolerance, uh, ethnic tolerance. That is the kind of peace we are talking about. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.